What's up guys, XM360 here, and in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the 500 milliwatt, 405 nanometer purple laser module. So, this one cost me about $38, it did come from a United States seller, and there are a bunch of people selling this exact laser. The reason I call it a laser module is because it's a bit different than laser pointers, in the fact that it does need to be plugged into a wall outlet, and it does need to have a constant power source going to it. Now, it's rated at 500 milliwatts. We're going to do an LPM test later in this video to see if that's really true or not. One interesting thing to note is that since I purchased this one on eBay, my one specific seller actually renamed the title 400 milliwatt laser. All the other sellers I see on there are still calling it 500, but that may be an indicator that this laser is a little bit weaker than most of the people are advertising and what he's selling is the same laser as all the other people so he doesn't have a version of it that's only 400 they are all selling the same laser so this right here is going to be that ac adapter that plugs into your wall and it goes to the laser module itself this does require a constant power source and then this other little box over here is going to be the laser itself and the laser is 405 nanometers, that is the purple color on the spectrum, that's UV purple. And because of that ultraviolet color, it's going to show up as blue on the camera, but it's not blue, it's UV purple. It's as purple as it gets, and for, for whatever reason, cameras just always pick it up as blue. So, taking this out of here, it is heavy, it does have some good weight to it, it has a solid metal construction, I'm not sure what type of metal, but I'd have to guess aluminum. And then it has the little cable that attaches to the AC adapter. And I just want to show you guys a close-up of the information on that bag. It says its peak wavelength is 405 nanometers. That's the purple color. The output power is 500 milliwatts. The operating voltage is 5 volts. And the operating current is 600 milliamps. So on the back of this laser right here, we see a couple of little warning labels. And I'm going to give you guys a close-up of this warning label too. It kind of just reiterates that information I just read to you and... It also labels this as a class 3B laser. And then towards the bottom, there's also a little yellow warning sticker that doesn't really say too much on it, but it does kind of say something about how you should wear eye protection, which I'll put a link down below to some safety glasses that you should definitely use when using this laser. So on the back of this laser, there's a little fan that actually runs while the laser is on to keep the laser cool, the laser diode. And then on the front of the laser, there is an adjustable focus. So because this laser is so powerful at 500 milliwatts and because it has an adjustable focus, you will definitely be able to do some burning and engraving with this laser. And we're going to do a burn test later on in this video. I gotta say, I like the metal feel to it. It feels like it has a solid construction. I'm going to move on to showing you guys some different lighting tests. So the first thing I'm showing you guys is how visible this laser beam is in a normal indoor lit setting. And I'm pointing the laser beam at my fireplace. You have to be careful what you're pointing it at, something that won't burn. This will burn human skin. It can burn clothes. It can burn walls. When I first plugged it in, when I was first testing it out, I had it pointed at a green painted wall and a little bit of smoke actually came off the wall. So you do have to be careful where you're pointing it. When it's focused in just right, it can be very powerful. And you also need to make sure you're wearing those laser safety glasses. So as for the beam's visibility here, you guys might think you're able to see it here a little bit. And I'm going to turn the lights off so you may see it a little more. But really, this is another deceiving trick from the camera. Not only does the camera pick up that purple color as blue, but it makes the beam a bit more visible than it really is with these UV lasers. Because UV, the 405 nanometer color, is so low on the spectrum and it's really just above the colors that are invisible to the human eye, the beam just really isn't visible. Even at 500 milliwatts, you really can't see the beam on this laser. You can just barely see it if you look just the right way. And that's because it's also far from the 555 peak color. 555 nanometers is the most visible laser beam color to the human eye. And I believe that's like a shade of green. But because this is so far and this is just above the colors that are invisible to the human eye, you really can't see the beam on this one. And even right here in a nighttime setting, you can kind of see the beam in person. The camera does enhance it a bit. The, the times where you will be able to see the beam, you could enhance it using things like fog and steam. Those will be able to enhance the beam and make it more visible, but that 405 nanometer color just really isn't that visible to the human eye. So I'm going to move on to the LPM test now. I'm using my Laser BA LPM, and I'm going to do two tests here just to be sure. I'm going to probably speed through this too because sometimes these will take a moment for it to get up to its peak. 
So after about 25 to 40 seconds here, it looks like we're getting a reading of an average on the first test of about 370 milliwatts. So I'm going to do a second test here and I will speed this one up too. The second test is giving us an average of about 350 milliwatts. So I'm going to round that one to about 360 milliwatts average power for this laser module. So I can understand why the one seller I purchased it from lowered the amount, the power rating from 500 milliwatts to 400. They probably got a complaint from a buyer just like myself who has an LPM and they probably found out that somebody tested it to only be closer to 400. So I still am impressed with that power. That's still a good amount and that's just about what I was expecting for something that's claiming to be 500. I expected probably about high 300s, low 400s. So I'm just using some red top matches here to test out the burning. I have it focused in and that first match took a little bit longer to light because I was trying to figure out where exactly it was focused in as far as the distance goes. So the rest of these burnings are going to be a bit quicker. I have my laser safety glasses on and I have a small bowl of water to put out the matches immediately. And this laser is making little work of these matches. It's lighting them almost instantly, which is great. I'm going to try burning the wood of the match now and seeing if I can get a flame. Although, usually the wood of the match is designed to not light on fire. So I'll probably just get some high burn marks and a lot of smoke off it. And I do have my laser beam pointed at a stone. That way it doesn't light my house on fire. That's a very smart idea. Make sure you be careful where this laser beam is pointing in the background. So I did get a lot of burn marks and smoke off of that, but I did not get a flame. Next, I'm going to move on to a green balloon and pretty much an instant pop. So that's great. I didn't even have to color in a little black mark like I do with some of my balloons. This one popped a green balloon instantly. Next, I have a plastic CD case and I'm burning the black part of it. We're going to see how quickly it's not going to like light it on fire. It's just going to burn all the way through. And I already just saw a little bit of the beam getting through there. It's already creating some holes. Yeah, it's already burned completely through here. So it's not the big hole. It's the small hole on the left. The big hole is from another laser pointer, but it burned through that pretty quickly. So the next one I'm going to do right here is some black electrical tape. And we're going to see if I can cut through all the way and how quickly. It's pretty much kind of like the same material as the black plastic CD case. It just melts the plastic. And try not to inhale too much of the smoke coming from this because they say that that smoke can be bad for you in some circumstances. But it's making pretty good work of this and it's just about cutting all the way through. So that was pretty quick. I'm going to move on to the next thing I'm going to use is going to be like a dry piece of bark. Kind of like a wood chip that has been inside so it's not wet at all. And I'm doubtful. I, I probably won't be able to light this thing on fire because I've tried this with several lasers and I'm never able to get these to light on fire. But it's really just to see how well I can burn it and how much smoke will come off of it. So as you guys can see, there is a considerable amount of smoke coming off this wood chip. No flame, but it is making some little etch marks and some burn marks. And you can use this laser for engraving as well. And then the next thing I have right here, the last thing is going to be a small piece of paper. And it's going to be a black piece of paper, a piece of paper that has a picture of tires on it. So it is a black piece of paper kind of. And I'm going to see if I can light this on fire or not. And I'm not seeing any flames. I am just seeing some smoke. It's almost like the beam is kind of going straight through the paper and burning a hole in it. Kind of like the CD case. But it's not really lighting it on fire. And I'm not getting a flame. And it's looking like I probably won't get a flame with this. Just a lot of smoke. It might also be that this magazine paper is kind of like waxy material. Maybe if I had something like black construction paper I'd have a lot more success. But overall I'm very happy with the burning results of this laser. I thought it was very powerful. I thought the adjustable focus was pretty simple to use and I'm going to kind of move to the reviewing aspect as I light a couple matches here. I thought this laser was very powerful even though it was close to 150 milliwatts less than its rating. I thought it still had a lot of strength to it for the price of $38 and I thought the construction was very good. The solid metal construction seems like it would definitely hold up. Now one thing I do have to mention to you guys. When I was researching this laser and looking at the reviews on different websites, I did notice there was a, a good amount of people that were complaining about an issue where their laser, they bought this laser module and they said it would stop working after a couple days or a week or so. It would either completely stop working altogether or it would get very dim and it would barely turn on. And I have had some issues with my purple lasers in the past, not this one specifically, but in my personal opinion, it does seem like the purple laser diodes 
are a bit less reliable than other colors but that is something to note I, I haven't had any issues with mine so I can't complain about that but just because of the amount of complaints I saw on the reviews of this laser I figured that was worth mentioning and besides that I, I didn't really have any issues with this laser I thought the power was very good for $38 even though it was understated it seems like a good reliable laser in my opinion and the burning capability was very good so I'll put the links down below on where you can purchase this for yourself and some laser safety glasses. If you guys found my video helpful in any way at all, hit that like button down below. And if you're new to my channel, hit that subscribe button for more amazing laser videos just like this. And as always guys, thank you for watching from XM360.